Pretty good privacy is a tool for signing, encrypting, and decrypting data. It can work on things like files, directories, commonly emails. OpenPGP is an open standard for the world under RFC 4880, and GNU Privacy Guard, or PGP or GNU PG, is free software from the Free Software Foundation that implements OpenPGP. Getting into some terminology, in PGP, the fingerprint is a identifier for a public key. It's mostly used for person-to-person -person verification as a representation of someone's public key. A binding refers to the connection between the identity of a person or an organization and the key. PGP uses the decentralized web of trust for validating this identity binding. Today I'll be using GNU PG for examples. It can be easily installed using any variety of package managers from Linux to Mac and a download on Windows. Creating a key is easy. Just run GPG full key gen. A wizard will appear and prompt for a user ID given in the form of your name followed by an email. A master signing key pair and this subkey encryption key pair is what is created when the generation of the certificate runs. It is recommended to actually set a two-year expiration on this subkey, acting as a dead man switch, as this can just be extended. If you're serious about using PGP, make sure to choose a strong password and make backups. PGP can be used for anything needing an end-to-end -end secure and private channel between users, the assurance that the receiver is who they say they are, to prove that you've said something for secure file transfer or for software signing. This is what Armor looks like. It's just ASCII text around the PGP data that is both human readable and readable by a computer. You might have seen this around the internet in different forms. In this case, it's a signed message. The encryption scheme for PGP is fairly straightforward. The public key encrypts a symmetrical random key that is generated, while this random key is what actually encrypts the data using a faster cipher, such as a block cipher or a stream cipher. These two data are then combined into an encrypted PGP message, and the reverse process happens on the decryption end. Now getting into some of the mechanics for user interaction, we start out with key rings. Key rings are a user's personal collection of their own and others' keys. These keys are used and or signed by the user. A key server hosts keys and certificates that can be downloaded, updated, and submitted. They are also just simply integrated with software tools and refresh all of your keys to see if they've had any changes on them and update them accordingly. One example is MIT's key server that you can visit at pgp.mit.edu, but of course there are many. Here are some examples of commands that you might run and what you would see for those commands in PGP using GPG software. Verifying a signature, creating a detached signature for a large file. Encryption and decryption is also easy. You can give a recipient into the command or it'll prompt you for any number of recipients. That SE is for signing and encrypting using whatever key you're sending with. Also decrypting is just a dash D command. You can also output to a file other than a terminal using dash O. Of course, there are other user interfaces for this as well. The verification of key user binding that we're talking about is important for knowing who someone is and to trust them. You might be most familiar with this in the public key infrastructure of SSL and TLS. There is blind trust in a certificate authority with a centralized tree structure at the root CA. It works and it is easy. PGP, on the other hand, uses a decentralized trust scheme in a graph structure. This is the web of trust that I've been talking about in the beginning. It is built on signatures on other public key certificates. These signatures acknowledge the ownership of a private key. Within a user's PGP key ring, there are various trust levels. The main four are not enough information, never trusted, marginally trusted, and fully trusted. These are assigned by the user with definitions specific to the user for how they want to use the software. Every key in a user's key ring has this trust, but it also has a validity. And this validity is a representation of the trustworthiness of the binding. So is the person who they say they are. There are two tuning parameters that can be used to adjust how skeptical the validity of a certificate is. Marginals needed and completes needed. By default, three and one. The higher these numbers are, the more skeptical the behavior. So here's a simple example. Remember, every one of these circles, these keys, from my perspective, has a trust and has a validity. I fully trust Alice as an introducer. She trusts the same thing for me. Bob and Eve are completely valid in this diagram if completes needed is equal to one, which is the default. 
if I changed the default of marginals needed to 2, then Carol is valid if I also marginally trust Bob and Eve. Notice that there is a signature chain to Dave, but it is not strong enough to consider him fully valid. Therefore, he is marginally valid and with an unknown trust. Building a web from a user's perspective is easy. You send their certificate to someone else or ask them to download it. This is mostly done by giving them your fingerprint. They would then sign it and then re-upload that change or return it to you. And then you do this for others because your signature indicates validity for others. Also, there's key signing parties, mostly at privacy conferences, and you would just exchange your fingerprint and then later sign it. No computers involved. Now, it is impractical to self-verify everyone that you communicate with, but this is why the web of trust exists. Now we're going to get into the analysis aspect of PGP, first by introducing what a strong set is. A strong set is where every key in a graph can also reach every other one, and it only takes two people to connect two smaller strong sets, making a bigger strong set. And from this, the strong set is the massive set of strongly connected PGP keys. From this idea of the strong set, we can use mean shortest distance as a statistical metric for basing trust in a key. It is just the average number of hops backward from any given key. This means that the lowest mean shortest distance is better. Again, this is analysis, not a perfect solution to trustworthiness. But it can encourage shortcuts of signing, thus strengthening the web. In this example, the mean shortest distance of Keeley is 13 over 5, because there's a total of 5 others in the strong set, and a total of 13 hops to get back to Keeley, or to get from Keeley to every other key. Now, of course, there are some failures in PGP. For example, it has poor UX with a steep startup, especially for a layperson, although the installation of GUI tools can be helpful, such as in a mail application. Additionally, for best security, the user needs to be in control of their private key, and there are not many well-made tools that are available or being built by major companies. For example, phone support on both iPhone and Android is significantly lacking. Plus, building a web of trust takes effort. It requires time, and it requires competency. Keybase.io is an attempt to bring this end-to-end -end encrypted PGP system to more people. It is open source, and it tries to connect social accounts, such as GitHub or Twitter, you can see my keys at keybase.io slash keelyhill. It also has end-to-end -end messaging and an end-to-end folder sharing file system now. So that's an overview of PGP and the Web of Trust. Thank you.